Hi, I'm Vera Stewart and welcome to The Very Vera Show. I'm really happy to be with you again today and you know, I've had a lot of fun bringing you up to date on what's going on with Very Vera. In the 1980s when I started this business in my home kitchen, I never dreamed that I would be in front of a camera doing my own show. So I've walked you through the 80s, I've introduced you in the 1990s when we got the mail order business started having casseroles that you could come pick up at our store and then actually shipping those all over the United States. So today we're going to bring you up to date in the year 2000 and beyond. I'm going to introduce you to two very special guests that have been part of my cooking camp program and we're going to make the best recipes today you have ever tasted. So come back and join us. We've got a lot of fun things to do tonight and we're going to have a lot of fun together. Welcome back. You know, I said earlier that the year 2000 and beyond just really took our company to a different level. You know, my mom used to say, it ain't bragging if you worked really hard to get there. So I hope you will allow me to kind of give you a little bit of a timeline of what we were doing in the year 2000 and beyond. We opened up our cafe business in 2002. In 2004, we actually brought in a cooking camp into our program. In 2010, we were featured on Throwdown with Bobby Flay. And I, for those of you that watched in this area, I went completely crazy when that happened. So as I think back to some of my favorite things during this 2000 years, I love to think about cooking camp the opportunity to bring young people into my company and introduce them to the magic that I learned beside my own grandmother has been so exciting for me. So with great pleasure, I would like to introduce you to two of my very favorite campers that have been with me for quite some time at the Very Very Cooking Camp. Elizabeth Pipkin and Sanford Satcher. I'm so glad to see both of you. How are you doing? Good. Good. It's kind of fun to be on a TV show, isn't it? Yes, I know. It's exciting. Y'all are making me feel a lot more comfortable. Elizabeth, you know, I remember when you signed up for cooking camp. What was your favorite thing about it once you got there? Well, I love being able to, um, you know, knowing how to make the food and being able, being able to do it at home. And I like the counselors, and you would always come by the little stations and, you know, give us tips since you know so much about the cooking. Oh, I remember that day I came, and y'all were making the biscuits. Remember I was saying, you know, don't touch the dough too much, and you loved getting all that flour on your hands. That was fun. Sanford, what do you remember being your favorite part? Well, you learn good things to help you become a better leader in your community, and also you teach us good table manners and how to set the table and all those things about, you know, besides cooking, beyond and Those cooking. are important things, mm -hmm. don't you think? I mean, you've been with Cooking Camp now five years, so since you were eight years old, you've probably utilized some of the things that you learned at camp. Yes, ma'am. Elizabeth, you know, last summer we did a little exercise at camp where um, you were going to give me suggestions of what you thought would be great for a TV show. Do you remember some of that? I do. I remember how I said, you know, if you do the, um, the cooking show, you might want to list the ingredients like on the screen or, you know, I also say, you know, always smile and do kid friendly stuff that, you know, everyone can make at home. Well, and you'll be happy to know that we are using some of your tips. So thank you so much for doing that for me. Now Sanford, this is my favorite part. Do you remember when you introduced yourself and you were eight years old and you were hardly taller than the table? Yes ma'am. And what did I say that you were gonna be one day? A senator and you were gonna be my campaign coach. <laughs> That is so awesome, and I still almost want to call you Senator Satcher. So don't you forget now one day when you decide to run for office, you're going to let me be your campaign manager. Yes, ma'am. Well, we have really had a lot of fun at camp, and these two young people certainly show how much they can learn from that opportunity. I hope you'll come back with us after the break. These two are going to show you a little bit about what they've learned at cooking camp over these last summers. And we're going to make something so delicious, you'll want to make it for tomorrow morning. Welcome back. I'm here with two of my favorite campers, 
Elizabeth Pipkin and Sanford Satcher have been joining me for many years at the Very Vera Cooking Camp. And I was so excited that you guys cleared your calendar. I know you're so busy, so the fact that you were willing to join me today is just awesome. We're making Pluckett Cake today, which, do you remember Pluckett Cake from camp? Yes, ma'am. It's just, it smells so good. It's just delicious. So I'm gonna get you guys to get started. We've already opened up a can of the biscuits and we've got the kitchen shears here. And why do we use the kitchen shears instead of a knife, Elizabeth? Well, it's safer and it goes by faster. Absolutely. So you guys get started on that. And let me talk to everyone a little bit about Pluckett Cake and what makes it such a favorite to me and to my family and to the campers. Pluckett Cake is, gets its name from the way that you eat it. And you'll see that, I'm sure you saw it at the beginning of the show, but we're gonna just pluck the pieces away. But it is a family tradition in my household to have it on every holiday. Thanksgiving and Christmas for sure, you're gonna walk into our home and you're gonna smell Pluckett Cake. So I'm gonna get started with putting two sticks of butter in this pan to get melted. And you know guys, one of the things that makes this really a good recipe is that you can get this part done the night before and just leave the pan on top of the stove. That would help mom out quite a bit. So I'm gonna get the butter melting. I'm gonna add to that a teaspoon of nutmeg. And these are those, that smell, don't you love that? It's just, it's so, you know, it's a fall smell, but it's great any time of year. And then this is a teaspoon and a half of cinnamon, and we all love that, right? And then it calls for two cups of dark brown sugar, and if you buy it by the box, you don't have to measure. That's exactly two cups. So I'm just gonna put that in, let that get going. And again, like I said, you can, you can do this the night before, and it makes it go by really easily. How are we coming on cutting over there, Sanford? Almost done. Elizabeth? Great. And as you can see by watching them do that, these kind of turn out into little pointy um, biscuits. Um, again, the brand of the biscuit is extremely important to me. Um, <laughs> there's a story about one Christmas Eve when I realized, oh my goodness, I forgot to buy the biscuits for the Pluckett cake and I sent John and Daniel to the grocery store. They came back with a no-name brand biscuit and the Pluckett cake didn't work and I cried on Christmas. <laughs> so you definitely want to make sure you buy the Grand's Buttermilk Flavor Biscuits. So be sure to get those when you go to the store. So as, there, as this is melting down, I'm gonna prepare the pan um, with a little bit of cooking spray. Elizabeth, excuse me just a minute, let me get that out of there. Will you take the lid off for me? Sure. Perfect. All right, we're gonna spray this, and as you can see, this pan has been used many times. So the more pan spray, the more likely it is gonna be to plop right out of that pan really well. So let's start, let's have ladies first, don't you think? Let Elizabeth go first, and I'm gonna let you just start putting your um, pieces in there. Okay. And Elizabeth, you know, yesterday when we were doing this together, what were some of the things that we talked about as far as putting those in the pan? Well, you don't really wanna, like you wanna scatter them all around, but you don't wanna like, you know, cram them together or else it won't be that fluffy and it's already gonna be, you know, Right. Together anyway, so to put it more together, just not. not so there's ready. really no science to it. It's just real easy and real light just to put that in there together. And it's amazing how it puffs up so pretty. Uh, Sanford, you know, um, it's interesting that uh, you've actually received, both of you actually received Camper of the Week awards at camp. And you know, one of the things that we love about camp, and I think you mentioned this, Sanford, is that you learn a lot more than just cooking at Very Vera Cooking Camp, the whole etiquette and the, the manners aspect, but just you know, being a team player too is so important at school and in the things that you do. All right, so I'm gonna help you get these in there real quick, and we're gonna start pouring this yummy sauce. As you can see, doesn't it smell great? We're gonna get that going on the top, and then we'll do another layer. So come back with us. I'm gonna be adding this wonderful sauce to the top of this delicious Pluckett cake. We'll be finishing it up after the break, but the best thing ever is to see it when it comes out of the oven. So come back with us. Doesn't this look great, y'all?
Here we are in the kitchen having so much fun, and I'm joined today by Elizabeth Pipkin and Sanford Satcher, who are two of my campers from Very Vera Cooking Camp, and we're having so much fun right now. Guys, we need to get busy on these tarts, so what we've got today, we're introducing you to the secret ingredient in your kitchen, and here it is, puff pastry. You can purchase this in the frozen foods at the grocery store, but if you want to buy it in the big sheets like this, we actually have it available at our location on Washington Road. So just give us a call or check our website out for that information. But the reason that this is the secret ingredient is because if you have a sheet of puff pastry, you can do what either one of these campers, our future chefs, are doing today. Uh, Sanford, what kind of pies are you going to be making with the puff pastry? I'm going to be making meat pies manly meat pies okay and what have you got here as your ingredients today um, I have some roast beef some ham some pepperoni and some what is it and what's all cheese, this out here cheese three different cheeses and onions and then ranch. okay and these are just things that we had left over in the fr refrigerator right yes that's what makes it so special, is he can make a gourmet meal tonight, just open up the refrigerator and pull him out whatever he wants. Now, Elizabeth, what about you? What have you got going on? Well, for my pies, I am making a peach pie and an apple pie. Yum. And I see you've got two different size pastries, so uh, tell me about that. It's, an, it's a dessert and a appetizer. Awesome. So the two bite size, maybe you could pass and put some, do that like at the end of the evening. Yes. Awesome, that's great. Well, I'm gonna let you guys get started on that. I'm gonna talk a little bit more about the puff pastry. And Sanford, if I could bother you for your knife, I'm gonna show them how to do out of the scraps. They used a, um, they used part of the puff pastry. You wanna save every little bit of this that you can. So if you don't use the whole sheet, which is this is what was left over from what they did, just you can put this back in the freezer. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut some leaves using the sharp side of the knife. I'm just gonna cut a leaf shape, just like that. And then Elizabeth, if I can, I'm gonna get on the edge of your cutting board and I'm gonna take the dull side of the knife and do a vein and then come back and do the little, the other veins on the side of the leaf. And this will be your garnish to go on your fruit pies. I'll be working on that. And Sanford, tell me now when you go back to your camp years and you were eight years old when you came to camp, um, what do you, what, or were there any other recipes that you really liked that we did at camp? Well, I remember the, the, the macaroni was really good. <laughs> that is awesome, the macaroni. And, yeah. Remember when we talked about that everybody said who in their family made the best macaroni and cheese? Mm -hmm. You know, and that's that's one of the neat things to me for, for both of you is that, you know, food is part of the tradition in your home. Um, so as you can see, they are, Sanford over here has got all of his filling in. You put a lot of different cheeses. He's dipping his finger in the water to, so the edges of the puff pastry will stick when he folds it over. And Elizabeth's already gotten to that part and she's pinching the edges. And then Elizabeth, what are you gonna do after that? Well, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to um, take a fork and kind of like crimp, crimp it. it. Yes. And then wash it over with some melted butter. Perfect. All right, and on yours, you're gonna do the same thing, but tell us what you're gonna do to the top. I'm going to put some slits in the top. Okay, well they're gonna wrap this up. We're gonna get these popped in the oven. We're gonna be looking at two really awesome things in just a few minutes. So come back with us. We're gonna be eating some yummy treats. My favorite part of a dinner party is setting the table. So let's do it together today. Dinner plate in the center of the placemat. Dinner knife to the right with the blade facing the plate. The teaspoon goes next, next to the knife, and we're about an inch away from the edge of the placemat. Dinner fork closest to the plate on the left. Your salad fork next to that because you eat with that first. And we're gonna have some yummy dessert tonight. So let's have the dessert fork at the top of the place setting. 
Your napkin goes on the left next to the forks with easy access to put it in your lap. We're gonna drink some delicious wine tonight. Put the wine glass at the top of the knife. Your water goblet goes next, right above the spoon. Beautiful place setting. Let's eat. Welcome back. You know, if the camera could smell, if the TV audience could smell, it's awesome in here, isn't it? Yes, the Pluckett cake is just amazing. I don't know whether it reminds me of camp or the holidays, but it's just great. But you know, a lot of times we say at Cooking Camp that when you can really smell something cooking, that means you probably need to check it. it means it's probably done. So I'm gonna walk over to the oven, pull out this Pluckett cake. Oh man, it's just gorgeous. You guys did a terrific job. Okay. Woo! Turned out beautifully, didn't it? This might be the best Pluckett cake ever. Okay, Sanford, if you'll come hand me that, we're gonna get these meat pies. And again, this these are the two meat pies that Sanford did and the two fruit pies that Elizabeth did. And those are going into a 400 degree oven for about 10 minutes just until they're golden brown. Um, Elizabeth, you had mentioned during the break that you wanted to talk about what you put on top of the pie. Tell us about that. Well, what you could put on top of the um, fruit pies is um, you could put like some cheese or you could put some um, ice cream on top of it. Vanilla ice cream goes good with the peach or the Absolutely. Apple. That sounds like a yummy dessert. And what would you recommend dipping the meat pies in, Sanford? Probably some ranch or some ketchup. Perfect. <laughs> That sounds great. Well, you know, let's quit talking about it. Let's try some of it. What do you think? Yes, All right. So we've got the, um, let's start with the meat pies first. And I've got one for each of you. These look so great. And then a fruit pie. And, you know, tell us, Elizabeth, about the different sizes that we did today and how you can utilize the different sizes. Oh. Ladies first. Well, Sanford. for the different sizes, one of them, the bigger one could be a dessert, and the um, smaller one could be the appetizer, so. Perfect. And on appetizer size, we always like to remember two bite size, because if you hand someone a past appetizer, you want to make sure that they can put take one bite and another bite and be done, okay? Stanford, do you want, would you like to have some dipping sauce for your meat pie? Yes, ma'am. We've got ketchup, mustard, and ranch dressing. Awesome. And the same thing for you, Elizabeth. Okay, it's that moment of truth. It's that time where we're gonna see if we can um, flip this Pluckett cake out. You might wanna wipe it down. Flip this Pluckett cake out. So I've chosen a dish that, let's come right in here so you can watch this really carefully. I've chosen a dish that's a little bit larger than the pan. And this is where you might wanna get your mom or dad to get involved because this pan is a little hot. But for the audience, we've let this cool for about five minutes. So I'm gonna put it on the top. I'm gonna to take my hot pads. Hold your breath, drum roll please. <laughs> okay, we're gonna flip this upside down. And Elizabeth, would you move that plate for me? Perfect. All righty, let's see how it did. I'm just gonna lift it up. Perfect. We've got one little piece that dropped right here, and we just put that right back on. And one in the pan, too. And one in the pan. And this is probably a little warm to eat, but we've got another one right here that we made yesterday on our practice that actually turned out really pretty, too. Come on, Sanford, tell us why it's called Pluck It Cake. Because you literally pluck it. You literally pluck it. Okay, <laughs> let's try that. Ladies first. I'm gonna have a little bit myself. I tell you, when we make Pluckett cake at home during the holidays, you can count on, you can count on having this being eaten all day long. Every time you walk through the kitchen, there's a little bit less. <laughs> but for those of you that joined us kind of at the end, I wanna make sure that I call out my two stars today. Elizabeth Pipkin has been a camper now at Very Very Cooking Camp for what, three? 
three years, and you're going to a brand new school this year. Where you, will you be going? I'll be going. To, I'll be going to Davidson Fine Arts. That's so awesome. And Elizabeth actually did her audition as a cooking show. That was so great. And Sanford, this is your fifth year as a camper. And where do you go to school in Edgefield? Woodlaw Academy. That's awesome. And I know you're probably one of the best students there. Yes, ma'am. I'm sure you are. All right. I'm so glad you guys cleared your busy schedules to join me today. I hope you've had a great time. I know the audience has enjoyed getting to know you. I want to remind everyone that you can pick up the secret ingredient, the puff pastry, at our location on Washington Road. We've got lots of camp openings for the rest of the summer. If your children are interested in that, you can check it out at our website at verybira.com. But in the meantime, remember, whatever you do, do it in good taste.